Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Hi there, and welcome to the show. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining me, and thanks for checking out the show. Now, if you're returning, welcome back. It's always great to have you here. Hey, are you a part of the Live Full Work Fun community yet? If not, be sure to hop over to Facebook and join the Live Full Work Fun Facebook group. So when I say Live Full Work Fun, what pops into your mind? What kind of lifestyle pops into your mind? What kind of work pops into your mind? Well, my definition of living full ultimately is living life without regrets. There's so much to do in such a little bit of time that we have on this earth. When my time comes, I want to look back on my life experiences and say, wow, I want to be at a place where I'm never thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I could have done that. I should have done this. I could have done this. I would have done this. I don't want to be the woulda, coulda, shoulda person. Heck, I know I won't accomplish every single thing I set out to do, but how can anybody, right? There's so many great opportunities. There's so many things to see. It's just not being, you know, I I just come back to, I don't want to have that woulda, coulda, shoulda mindset. Now, my life has evolved into living a life with the freedom to work from anywhere. For me, I chose a life of entrepreneurship and love how my life and business has evolved over the past several years. What I've learned over the years is achieving the full life that you want means implementing plans that you dream up. Dreaming is fantastic. Because you can get all excited about seeing the things way in the future that are not a reality right now. But here's the thing, right? Dreaming is easy because you can just sit there and just think of things. What the hard part is, is actually implementing the actions to move you toward that dream. Dreaming up the ideas, the easy part. Having the want to attitude can be there. But when it comes right down to it, right out of the, you know, the gate, you might get things started because you're so gung ho. But the reality is implementing is hard. Implementing means creating new habits to see those plans through. Implementing means perhaps making adjustments to get back on course because you discover new things along the way. Now, in my journey of living a full life and working fun, I've discovered that ultimately what I and my team do for our clients is move them forward in making their plans happen. We are an implementation team, you know, and we happen to implement plans when it comes to content marketing. We consistently go through a seven phase implementation process on all of our projects, big or small. Now, living a full life means living a life without regrets. And in order to move forward, implementation of any plan is required. And so I discovered that, huh, I didn't really discover it, but I move through when I make my plans a reality, whether it's content marketing or not. Some parts of these phases in a form of these seven phases, I do for myself to accomplish a goal to make my dreams, my plans, become a reality. So today, I thought I would share my seven-phase implementation process when it comes to podcast production. Now, many of you out there may want to start a podcast. Heck, if you don't, 
stick with me through the show because I bet you'll be able to see those phases and then apply them in another part of your world. Because like I said, I use these seven phases of implementation in practically any project that we do, big or small, even personal or professional. You know, right now, I'm going through these phases on my and Robert's suburban tiny house build right now. Yeah. But today, let's talk about the seven phase implementation when it comes to podcast production. Let's just put it down into those terms. It's one thing to start a podcast, right? You go through the phases to get the show launched. So the show is launched and out there. These phases could help you first launch a show, but then you need to use the phases to implement the production of each and every episode. Once the show is launched, you still have to keep it going on that consistent basis. It's an ongoing process to keep the momentum going. Now, if you're transitioning into becoming a podcaster, perhaps you've gone through a course to get the know-how to know what tools and an outline of events that must happen to launch a show. Maybe you've hired someone to coach you along the way. That is great. Maybe you've already launched your show, but having trouble staying consistent with publishing. It all happens. Chunking down a big project like producing a podcast is super important in order to move forward. Chunking down the podcast production project has to be drilled down one step at a time, one episode at a time to move forward. Producing a podcast is a big deal and you must keep that why in the line of sight because coming up with the ideas may be easy. Remember, I wanna be a podcast producer. Saying that out loud is easy. Implementation is hard, but it doesn't have to be. Now, a couple of weeks ago, in episode 204, you met Christopher Nelson. If you haven't listened to it yet, you need to go back there and just scroll back in the show list and have a listen. His story is fantastic. Well, anyway, after the interview, I ended up asking him why he was starting his podcast. And I'd like for you to have a listen. Here we go. So you're creating your brand new podcast. It's it's going to launch soon. It's Tech Careers and Money Talk. You're in the, the midst of before the launch. Have you ever done a podcast before? No, no. I've never so, created my own podcast. So what led you to want to do a podcast? It's, I think I love having conversations. Like I think as I've gotten into this you know, the world of investing, the one thing that I love the most is I have conversations with people all the time. I absolutely love it. I am super inquisitive. I love knowing more. I love, you know, and this is where, you know, and even just as I was in my, my career, right. As I would, you know, do, you know, I did a lot of what I would call informational interviews where I would interview people like, what's your role and what do you do and all these things. And so I love conversations. I realized that my, ability to have great conversations can actually generate a lot of content faster than if I go blogging. And, you know, and I am going to do these, I am going to produce them with the video and the audio uh, so that we can leverage both. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love, we have the opportunities to repurpose or dual purpose, put our, our content in different platforms to kind of cater to the different ways that people consume content. Are you going the DIY method or did you hire somebody to help you? Yeah. So I'm working with Danny Osmit. Who, nice. Yeah. 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 You know, I'll, Danny I'll, with Mike Kim's group. Yeah. Yeah. I'll link to, to his website. So he helped you and he's coached you and he's helped you go through all the details of launching a show. Launching is, yeah. So, so there's all of the technical details. I mean, I have this mic because of Danny, right? Uh, I worked a little bit on the camera setup before him, but I think some of the things, right, is so important. And, you, you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier was he gave me permission to really have a show where I'm actually leading some of the episodes because I do have so much of my book in those strategies that I want to share. And I think it's so easy when you don't 
when you're not in podcasting where you look at interview only, interview only, and I think especially in the real estate side where I've gotten a lot of my education is listening to a lot of experts be interviewed is there's sort of this very standard format. And I thought, oh, I have to do that. And he's like, oh no, you do not. Like, let's talk about this. And he also, I think, talked about, you know, how do you, you know, just start out in in really start soliciting a ton of feedback so that then you can actually shape and grow it. But the definition of what it is, it's so interesting that in all of this content creation, you know, there is this desire to come out with this oh, like this beautiful, perfect. We all just want to come out and hey, here's the Mona Lisa. Or, or what have you. And the reality is, is that we have to just start it and we have to, we have to shape it and we have to mold it and we have to go. And even like you here, you are, you know, doing, I think this is your third, you know, pivot, you know, of, of shaping it, but this is what we have to do is, is really then respond to these things. So uh, that's what he's really helped, helped me do, which I, I think is, is incredible value. In addition to the, all the checklists of what you need to do. Well, what I heard you say was that Danny had gave you permission to be yourself, shape a show that is yourself. You don't have to be anybody else. And that's the beauty of it. And I love it. Thank you for sharing, Christopher. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. At the time of the recording of this short conversation, he hadn't published his first episode yet. But today, you'll find his show, Tech Careers and Money Talk, in all the major podcast players. Yay! Great, Chris. I'm so glad that you launched it. So happy for him. He also mentioned a fantastic resource, Danny Osmond from Emerald City Productions. He has a fantastic podcast, too, that I follow. It's called Podcast Strategies. It's worth checking it out. The links are just down there in the, in the show notes. So after listening, scroll down and go explore. What I liked about the conversation with Christopher is that I gained a bit of insight on what works for him to implement his podcast production. Just a little insight, a little behind the scenes, because we all are wired just a little bit differently. He had hired someone to break things down with him, which was fantastic, to move him closer to his launch date. So listening to Christopher's why he wanted to start his podcast and how he got the ball rolling for launching the show, what I see for implementation, you must chunk down the project. Yes, chunk it down always. So getting the ball rolling on launching, Christopher went through the steps to implement. Now, to keep it going on a consistent basis, each episode must go through the steps to implement. Here's the seven phases of implementation that my team and I go through for each and every episode for either this show as well as for our clients' shows. So here they are. Phase one, plan. Phase two, create. Phase three, edit. Phase four, design. Phase five, schedule. Phase six, verify. And then phase seven, report. Now mind you, you may do every single phase Or there are going to be opportunities to delegate some pieces. For this podcast, for example, some of the phases are delegated or bits of a phase are delegated to a team member. I definitely don't do every single thing for the production of this show. Then for our clients that we help them produce their podcast, depending on the client, we as an implementation team will have shared or complete responsibility over different phases. We work closely, you know, with with our clients and we work that out in the project plan as we assign roles. So let's drill down all seven of those phases just a bit and put it in the lens of the podcast production. Now, planning. Planning is the first phase. And at a high level, when you're in the launching phases of a show, one of the elements that you'll need to plan for and drill down is the frequency of publishing. And so that must be decided like way at the very beginning. This show is a weekly production. I made that decision, I don't know, several years ago. That had already been established. But then a piece of my 
my planning that I do oh around November, December time frame. I get this cheap dollar store monthly calendar that is the size it's a half sheet of paper size folded and you know I spend a dollar on it <laughs> and uh, it goes with my other notebooks I like to travel with it but this gives me a visual what I do is I buy that calendar and I open it up November and December and then I get my pencil out and since I publish on Wednesdays, part of my planning is that I write down the episode number that will appear on that Wednesday for the entire year. That's my first part of planning. I'm committing to that. I'm committing to it in writing. And I'm starting to get a framework. And just by doing that, you know, this last last year, when I kind of set up my calendar for the year and knowing when uh, what episodes are, are going to be published when, it occurred to me or I discovered that episode number 200 just happened to correspond and was going to publish on my and Robert's wedding anniversary. So that immediately made me think, huh, I think we should do something special on that day. It's a 200th episode. It's our anniversary. What can we do special? So that's what sparked the idea of the topic for that particular episode that Robert would come on the show and we would celebrate some achievements. We'd celebrate our 200th episode, we'd celebrate our marriage, and we'd celebrate our adventures. So that's a little side note on some planning part. Now, numbering of the episodes in my calendar then allows me to drill down and plan by quarter and then by month. I don't necessarily do this all at once. I'm not specific, you know, way back in November, December, when I was writing down the episode numbers to know exactly the topic or who's going to be on each show or anything like that. It's just the, the fact that I'm committing to all of those episodes. Now, fast forward to planning each episode. Okay, I've moved from doing podcast production on a weekly basis to batching. So I do these steps. I plan out like three or four at a time and I outline those out at a time. And then I have a habit. I record interviews. I have this habit that I go through this uh, processing or this uh, implementation plan for just interviews only so that I have several interviews in the bucket of recordings, if you will. And then I go and plan out a month's worth, even a quarter's worth of episodes based on how many or who I've interviewed uh, for the past few weeks. I know in advance who will be the interview. I make decisions on when to publish. I look at my bucket of recorded podcasts and I make decisions in this planning phase when my guest's episode will launch. Maybe it's based off of grouping certain topics together. Like uh, several months ago, I batched a whole month of talking about networking because there were some guests that I had re interviewed that both ran networking groups. So that seemed to, to fall in line with topic wise. But I also make decisions on when to publish based off of when my guest has something launching and we want to do some coordination of messages. There's a lot that goes in planning. It's chunked down. It's getting that writing down. Okay, what specifically is going to be uh, the topic for the show and, and things like that. So now that the topic is picked for your podcast episode and the planning phase has well gone underway, now it's phase two. This is the create phase. This is the phase where the writing and the recording is done. You'll write out the outline of your episode. And if you're like me, I don't feel like I can talk a lot off the cuff. So for the most part, I try to write out a script for each ep episode. Not as much as I used to. I'm better at ad-libbing, I think. 
a little bit than I was in the past. So I don't spend as much time writing out a script. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. Some may say that this process of outlining an episode falls into the planning phase. Well, I'm not going to split hairs on that matter. No. To me, when you've planned out a topic, you've just got kind of that that sketch, just the, the idea, then it's time for writing, i.e. creating. So when you have your outline of your topic that you've created in the planning phase, now it's time to record. And when you're done with the creation phase, the writing, the recording, now it's on to phase three. And that is editing. You've got your raw recording, and now you can edit and refine it. If you're like me and have like dogs in the room while you're trying to work, they will inevitably wake up, stretch, shake, and want to bark to go outside just right when you're in the middle of recording. (sighs) That just happens. Then there's times where you just totally flub up. Well, Robert has taught me that there's no need to start the entire thing over. You don't have to have a pristine recording from the beginning to the end. No, just take a pause. Pause. Gather yourself a bit. Then start that part over again. Just like when the dogs shake, want to bark get out of the house. Just uh, what I do is take off my, my headphones. I just leave. I keep the recording going and then I come back. That's just me because I don't want to start over. I'll edit it. So you'll see that pause in the audio editing program that you use where you can listen more carefully and do some more cutting where you need to. This is the time not only that you can be editing the audio of your podcast, but you can pick the pieces of your outline and or script for your episode and edit to do show notes. You can edit your script or your outline for some social posts, you know, things like that. So that's what I consider editing. So when you're satisfied with the editing phase, then it's off to phase four. It's the design phase. I love the design phase. I think that it's the best part because we make all the artwork that goes in with that podcast episode. It's for the social post. It's for the blog post, you know, things like that. We add the title of the episode for some of the images. We add some audio, you know, do some those, you know, it's just this creative piece. And we most definitely add our guest image or something funny or, you know, just something fun. In my mind, this also is where the assembly of the podcast episode falls. Once the episode is edited, then adding the intro and and the music, the outro, all of those elements in finalizing the episode. That's where the design phase comes into play. Now, I say that this is my favorite part. It is. Unfortunately, my team gets to have all the fun with that. That responsibility is for the team, and they make some fantastic design assets. And I don't really know how to, I I know that I could be taught, but I don't really know the aspect of assembling the the episode. Robert is our sound engineer and he gets that all in line and get the levels in line and things like that. So that part is is delegated, at least for me. Now once the pieces are put together for the episode, all the design elements and the, the episode is assembled, on to phase five. And that's the scheduling phase. The beauty of technology that we have today is that we can schedule these episodes way in advance. It's pretty cool. You can be working days, weeks, or even months in advance and schedule shows so that you're not stressed or under the wire of getting an episode together at the last minute. I've been batching episodes for a while now and my stress level has gone down tremendously. And I don't have to work on podcasts each and every week. I can batch them up a certain way and just concentrate on on them for a blocked amount of time. 
This is the time that the episode is uploaded into Libsyn. You know, Libsyn is the podcast syndication service that I use and many of our clients use. And it's where the audio, the images, the show notes, all of that that we created in the previous phases are uploaded and then scheduled to release at a future date. It's that date that I wrote down in the planning phase. We coordinate a blog post for each episode and the audio is embedded and that is formatted in my WordPress site and scheduled for that future date that I want to publish. Social posts are uploaded into our content studio system and are scheduled. You know, by this point, I'm feeling fantastic that things are so much, you know, the podcast episode is behind me and I can look into the future. The episode is practically done. I can put it out of my mind and move on to other things. This is the time that I have celebration for sure. Now, I celebrate at each phase because I think it's it's fun to celebrate because I think it's worth celebrating at each phase. But by golly, during the scheduling phase, this is a big deal because it's like, whew, the big part of it's done and behind us. So after scheduling, we still have two more phases. So let's get into phase six. That's verify. So when you schedule things in advance and let some automation happen, something is bound to happen. It might, it might not, but it's a good idea to make sure that your podcast actually publishes, right? And for me, I just happen to subscribe to my own show. All I do is see if on Wednesday mornings, Oh, there's a new show in the iTunes feed. That's the verification. It's just a glance. I, If I don't see it on that Wednesday morning, that new episode pops up, and it has happened, you know, things do happen, then I know, oops, you know, maybe I need to look into it a little further to see what happens. I glance at my social feed during the week anyway, and I just see if things are moving along. There's not a lot of labor intensiveness that needs to happen in this verify phase, but it's just a good idea that it's a monitoring phase to make it simple that things are going according to plan. And now, finally, we're at phase seven, and that's report. The reporting phase is when you gather the key indicators. Look at the numbers and make decisions to adjusting the plan if you want to, or if you're still on course, or if you know, you're know you fulfilling the goal of why you're doing this. In the case of my podcast production, I don't really get granular and have goals on how many downloads that I must have for each and every episode. That doesn't fulfill my why. For me, I like to pop in and see the overall picture of how many downloads this month are are happening. And we do that on a weekly basis just to see, all right, this is how many downloads as compared to last year at this time and, and, and things like that. It depends on what the trends are if we want to go in more granular. And it depends on the goals too in this reporting phase. And you're going to have different goals. And you may have goals for a particular set of podcasts. For example, if you're, I don't know, for a a whole month or for a whole quarter, if you are in your podcast sharing the sale of of a course, you might talk about it in four or five or six or seven episodes. Well, then you're not necessarily measuring and reporting how many downloads. Maybe you're in conjunction with that. You'll want to look at, you know, the stats for the number of sales of that course or the number of free downloads that you're, you're talking about that you received in that time frame. The reporting happens to, it's like, okay, you did all of this. Are you achieving your goal? You need to report on that so that you can evaluate it. You know, your podcast is a platform and you can achieve many different goals through this form of platform. So the reporting phase is reviewing numbers that are associated with the outcomes that you wanted to achieve. Then you can adjust your plan accordingly. You might want to go into your your downloads and see which episode was the most downloaded. 
the topic that was most downloaded? Maybe it was several weeks ago. Maybe it was a couple of years ago. Well, if it was so popular, then that topic is worth talking about again. So that can help you go back up into the planning phase. So then you can go plan and then go through the process. There you have it. I've laid out my seven phase implementation process that my team and I do for practically everything we do and applied it to podcast production. Plan, create, edit, design, schedule, verify, report. Over and over, that's what we do as an implementation team. Plan, create, edit, design, schedule, verify, report. And you can do that too. If you'd like even more help with your podcast episode production, well, feel free to download the checklist that my team and I have developed over the years to make our life easier and, quite frankly, it makes our work fun. When our, you know, we have these checklists, it makes it easier, so work gets to be more fun when, when it's easier. Go to scrivenersolutions.com forward slash podcast dash checklist scroll down into the show notes. You can just click on that link right there in the show notes. You know, this checklist helps you chunk down all the little details we do when it comes to podcast production. Again, scrivenersolutions.com forward slash podcast checklist. Well, thanks for being here with me today. I do hope that you enjoyed the episode and I'd love for you to do me this tiny favor. If you would please share this episode with just one person. One person who you might find that it would be helpful and enjoyable. Maybe they've talked about starting a podcast. Well, share this. Just text the link to them. And again, be sure to scroll down to the show notes and click on the links and go exploring for all the resources that are, were offered in this show. Well, let's continue this conversation Hop over to Facebook and post what your biggest takeaway of today's show was in the Live Full, Work Fun Facebook group. A big part of living full is following through with implementing your plans. Making work fun is going through a system so that things are easier and you can enjoy the process. Implementing doesn't have to be hard, but it does need to be done on a consistent basis. Otherwise, you'll never get your plans done. So I'll see you over there in the Live Full Work Fun Facebook group. Drop in a message. Say hi. Talk about your biggest takeaway from today's show. Well, thanks again for listening. Until next time, have a fantastic week. Live Full Work Fun. Work Fun.